Good morning and welcome to Space Center Houston. I'm William Harris, President and CEO, and I'm so delighted to welcome you here for this extraordinary presentation. You're here during a very special week at Space Center Houston. It is our Moon to Mars Festival presented by Welby Financial. The festival runs through Sunday, so we hope you'll enjoy it uh, while you're here today. And we invite you to be part of this very, very special celebration, recognizing our preparation to return to the moon and eventually send humans onto Mars. And we're very excited that you're here for this special presentation of NASA Presents the Artemis III Lunar Spacesuit. This is the first public event revealing the Artemis III Lunar Spacesuit. Thank you to our NASA and Axiom Space colleagues for selecting us as your host. Today's program is being streamed live on NASA TV, and so I want to extend a warm welcome to all of our online viewers. And we have some very special students from Space Center Houston's Explorer Camps who are joining us today. Would you please all stand? And please stay standing. And then I also want to recognize our participants in our Girls STEM Academy. Would you all stand as well? You are all the next generation of explorers. You'll have many opportunities in your career and your life choices. From an astronaut to an artist or a scientist or an engineer, you can do it. And everyone plays a vital role in advancing space exploration. So again, let's give them all a round of applause. You all can be seated. Thank you for joining us this morning. You're part of living history. Now I'd like to introduce our speakers. We're honored to be joined by Bob Cabana, NASA Associate Administrator. Laura Kearney, EVA and Human Surface Mobility Program Manager at NASA Johnson Space Center and a member of our Board of Directors. <laughs> Vanessa Weish, Center Director for NASA Johnson Space Center. <laughs> Michael Sufredini, President and CEO of Axiom Space. <laughs> Mark Greeley, EVA Program Manager of Axiom Space. and Russell Ralston, EVA Program Deputy Manager of Axiom Space. And now it gives me great pleasure to turn the podium over to Bob Cabana. Thank you, William. And uh, thank you to Space Center Houston for hosting this event today. It's uh, really great to be here with Axiom for this event, Mike. You know, uh, when I look back on the Apollo program, when all of us look back, we look at those iconic images of the technology that enabled the astronauts to make those first steps on the moon, their spacesuit. And now we're developing a spacesuit for a new generation, the Artemis generation, the generation that's going to take us back to the moon and on to Mars. And it is going to be so exciting. When that first woman, steps down on the surface of the moon on Artemis III, she's going to be wearing an Axiom spacesuit. So we're going to... <laughs> and, and I can't wait to see that happen. You know, we're going back to the moon, but we're going to the south pole of the moon this time. And why are we going there? It's challenging, right? We're going to learn more. There's water ice there. Water is hydrogen for fuel and oxygen to breathe. We are going to learn how to operate on the moon for extended periods of time and learn how to operate away from planet Earth and utilize the resources on the moon. And all of this is in preparation for eventually going on to Mars. And we're making those first steps now. We've got to have an EVA mobility suit in order to make that happen. And this is the suit that's going to do it. You know, I'm very pleased to be here uh, at the Johnson Space Center. This was home to me for a very long time. And uh, one of the prides of the Johnson Space Center is the EVA Surface Mobility Program that's here. And uh, it's my pleasure now to turn this over to the director of the Johnson Space Center, Vanessa Weiss. Vanessa?
thank you, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> So um, at NASA's Johnson Space Center, we're just so super proud to be able to continue the legacy of doing spacewalks, as Bob mentioned, uh, from Apollo Heritage, using our suits for science operations. Uh, assembly of the International Space Station. Uh, and uh, operations and maintenance that's ongoing. And now we're looking forward for our return to the moon and using our suits for doing science operations on the lunar surface. Uh, at Johnson Space Center, we have been working doing technology development uh, in-house with our engineers and our operators on uh, design for an exploration suit. We have provided all of that technology, all of the drawings, all of the data, all of the test results for the community. And Axiom Space will be one of the companies that is going to take that and make us new suits. We have not had a new suit since the suits that we designed for the space shuttle. And those suits are currently in use on the space station. So 40 years, we've been using the same suit based on that technology. And now today, Axiom is going to innovate. They're going to take what NASA has provided in, uh, from the testing that we've done, and they will now take and come up with uh, more functionality, uh, more performance, more capability, and we're very excited about what's going to be happening. Uh, at NASA Johnson Space Center, we are proud to partner. We will be working uh, together. We'll provide our expertise. We're going to provide all of our facilities. And we will be working together to make sure that we have a safe suit that performs and does everything that our astronauts need for doing surface operations. So we're looking forward to the things that Axiom is doing. And I want to thank the Axiom team. I want to thank the NASA and um, all of our teams that work together to make this happen. Thank you. And now I'm going to turn it over to Laura. Hi, good morning. Uh, glad to be here and to see you guys today. I am truly honored to be uh, the manager of what Vanessa mentioned is the EVA and Human Service Mobility Program here at Johnson Space Center. That for short means spacesuits and rovers. Um, the spacesuits are the first part of our program that is becoming real. We've been working really hard for a few years to get everything on contract. Um, but once that is in place and we actually have contractors selected, it's really excited to see their work coming to fruition and seeing real hardware. Um, so this contract is a little bit different. It's similar to what we have used for commercial cargo and commercial crew, where we call it a service contract. So historically, NASA has actually owned the spacesuits. Think of it like owning your car. The way we have contracted on what we call the extra vehicular activity services contract is we actually buy services from the vendor. So think of it more like a rental car. So Axiom will be providing the hardware for both training and for flight. They will bring that hardware in, and we, NASA, will utilize it and operate it on the surface of the moon um, for our moonwalking. So NASA will actually be in the role still of um, mission control and making the um, mission authority, mission execution decisions, but Axiom's going to be right there with us. Um, making sure that suit is, is safe as we have our astronauts walking on the surface of the moon. So this suit, uh, we have a lot of tough requirements on it, so these guys have their work cut out for them. Um, the moon is definitely a hostile place, and the South Pole is going to really be a challenge. So a lot of um, thermal requirements. Um, we are really looking for improved mobility um, so that our astronauts can operate more efficiently and effectively than they were able to do many years ago in Apollo. Um, and then, of course, we have really stringent safety requirements, as Vanessa mentioned, on the suits as well. So um, they certainly have their cut, work cut out for them, but we are absolutely confident um, that they are going to be successful. Uh, so our role as NASA is, as Vanessa said, to make sure that all of our expertise and our data and our facilities are made available to them. And um, then we will be in there hand-in-hand um, hand with them, helping make sure that they are successful, bringing all of our knowledge to the table, 
um, all of our experience, um, along with our, our friends from the crew office, um, just providing them our expertise and advice and guidance as they go forward. So super excited to have Mark and Russell and their team um, and really looking forward to a few years from now when we see that first Axiom boot print on the moon. All right, we keep forgetting to introduce. So I think I'm going to pass it on to Mr. Mike Seferdini. All right. Thank you, uh, Laura and Bob and Vanessa, too, for being here. This, this is a big deal for us. Um, let me start by saying, uh, Mark, when I look at here, this sea of new astronauts, I think we're going to need some more suits. <laughs> but first, let me, let me tell you how pleased we are as a company. It's a, it's a huge deal to be selected to provide the, the lunar surface suit uh, for NASA's Artemis program. It's a... It's an international program. We're not just taking the nation to the moon and beyond. We're taking the, 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 the we're taking civilization to the moon and beyond. And so we're pleased that humanity's next steps on the moon are going to be in an Axiom space suit. And we're very excited to be a part of this, uh, the exploration mission as it goes forward. Um, the other thing I need to say is, uh, and they've, they've touched on a little bit here this morning, but this is not something that you do by yourself. This is a partnership. It's a partnership with NASA. Uh, the design that we chose and brought forward is a uh, evolvable design from the orbit suit to the lunar surface suit. It's based on about 10 years worth of work that, that's been going on at NASA Johnson Space Center by suit experts. Um, and we're, we're happy to have all of that expertise uh, and that work done. I think, I think when it's all said and done, about 50% of the suit will be based on of uh, the original design done by NASA and probably the other 50% will be the work uh, that this team sitting in the auditorium will do. So that's first and very, very important. And as Laura said, this is a critical system. It's like, uh, you know, we all get nervous on launch day. Well, when you do an EVA, it's, it's, uh, it's a significant challenge. And so it's very important that you have very strict uh, safety guidelines and a suit that will uh, provide the redundancy and the reliability you need to make sure every time a human steps foot on the moon uh, that they'll be able to do what they need to safely and get back uh, and be ready for the next uh, the next mission. So for a second though I want to I want to take a moment to acknowledge the Axiom team which is as far as I can tell nobody's working on suit today because they're all here <laughs> but could you guys stand up and be recognized this is the Axiom space team. <laughs> You guys are awesome. Um, and, and when I say Axiom team, it's not just Axiom Space, KBR, Paragon, David Clark, uh, let's see, APT Research, Sofic, uh, and Aerosciences and Technology. Did I get them all? Airlock. And Airlock. Oh, goodness gracious. Airlock. The, uh, uh, I, did I mention, didn't mention Paragon? I got, uh, left out IM2? All right. Sorry about that. Paragon, Intuitive Machines, and Airlock. Um, anyway, my point is, we're a big team. We're, we brought a lot of expertise from around the country to work together to build this suit. Um, and it's a critical part of exploration. Uh, and we're, we're extremely excited and proud to have been selected to, uh, to go on this journey with, uh, with NASA as it takes uh, civilization beyond, beyond low Earth orbit. So with that, uh, I think my job is to hand it off to Mark. We've been sitting here talking about all this stuff, but we have an exciting thing to show you, so uh, Mark will get us started down the road. Go ahead. Thank, thank you, Mike. Um, yeah, so a lot of hard work has, has been completed for the team to be here today with the spacesuit. Um, <clears throat> for the last couple of years, our team has been off really focused on, on three things, people, processes, uh, and facilities and equipment. Um, our our team is comprised of many, many people from the NASA XEMU program, so they bring a lot of expertise forward. Uh, a lot of our team has worked multiple EVA programs. Uh, and then we leveraged industry, automotive, um, <clears throat> oil and gas, the theater arts, and, and even um, um, design, uh, design from some of the, the uh, I'm sorry, I lost my words. Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, our, sorry, 
professional clothing design. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so our, our, we have a vast base of, of really talented and experienced people. Um, our processes, uh, you combine all that with Axiom's agile development process and the team's able to move extremely fast. Um, but, but in a very, very, uh, in a very, uh, in a very controlled environment, which is critical to, to building and designing spaceflight hardware. Um, you couple that with using NASA's XEMU technologies and, and it just makes the team's performance even greater for, for success. Uh, Axiom has a number of facilities. Uh, the, the most recent facility we're about to, we have just populated or, or moved into is the EVA program facility. So the team is very excited about that. We vertically integra integrated all the team members and Axiom under one roof. And we're about to open our state-of-the-art labs. We've been working in temporary space, space which, which has been very accommodating. Uh, but we'll have everything we need to design, manufacture spacesuits for the lunar surface and for Axiom's uh, space station. And with that, I just want to thank the EVA team on behalf of Russell and I. Thank you so much for, for all of your hard work. Uh, we thank your families for standing, standing by as, as, as the teams work long hours sometimes. And we'd also like to thank uh, Laura, Chris, Jesse, Ben. Uh, we appreciate all the collaboration with you and your team. Uh, the insight and collaboration has been, has gone exceptionally well and, and you guys are a big part of our success as well. Thank you. I I think we're going to a video now. It's like a little bit of each of us is going up there with the astronauts and a little bit of our mentors, a little bit of our family, like it's, it's more than just ourselves, right? It's everyone before us and everyone after us. So that's, um, you can definitely feel it. That gives you goosebumps, right? Like that is, it hasn't sunk in yet and I don't know if it will ever sink in, even when it's happening and you're looking at the moon and you're like, there's someone on the moon in an Axiom suit, like, that is the dream. changing so fast right now and it's going to be such a great time to want to get into any aspect of the space program whether you know as an engineer a designer an astronaut somebody you know stepping foot on another planet and now the moment you've all been waiting for Good morning. Uh, 
My name is Russell Ralston. I'm the Deputy Program Manager of UVA at Action Space. In the suit here this morning is Jim Stein. Uh, Jim is uh, an extraordinary engineer. He's a chief engineer on uh, our team. So we gave him the honors. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. We, we gave Jim the honors of demonstrating the suit this morning. I'm going to give him this, uh, this little walking staff here. Um, we are in Earth gravity. We're not on the moon, if anybody doesn't know. Um, on the moon, the gravity is about one-sixth of what it is here. So just in case Jim loses his balance, for safety reasons, we want him to have that. But So I'm going to talk through the suit design uh, just very briefly. And as I do that, uh, Jim's going to perform some different um, actions, mobility, to, to demonstrate the mobility of the suit. Uh, before, we, before we get into that, though, I want to talk about this cover layer. So the cover layer that you see, the, the black, the orange, the blue, um, personally, I think this looks amazing. Uh, I want to thank Esther Marquise for helping us design this. Esther is um, a designer, a spacesuit designer on the show For All Mankind, if anyone has seen that on Apple TV+. Plus. Um, so, so this suit has a lot of that worked into this. Um, one of the differences between this suit and the suit that will be on the moon is that it will, the moon suit will mostly be white. So we'll replace all the black with white. And that's really for thermal reasons, so didn't want anybody to, to get that mixed up. Um, but other than that, I think this is just a fantastic, fantastic looking suit. So let me, let me go top to bottom here um, and just describe the suit overall. So we'll start with the light band. I think you guys saw the lights as Jim walked out on stage. Uh, on, the light band is mounted to the visor assembly and to the helmet bubble. Uh, and this, this essentially gives the astronauts lights to see whether they're in shaded portions of the moon or if they're in low Earth orbit. In a night pass, they can turn on these lights to see um, using tools or translating on the space station or anything like that. We also have on the side here, we have a HD video camera. So those of us back on Spaceship Earth watching the EVA uh, will be able to watch it in high definition, which will be a fantastic upgrade, I think, from, <clears throat> from current day technology. All of this is mounted on the helmet bubble. Um, which is amounted to what we call, in this configuration of our suit, the hard upper torso. So the hard upper torso goes roughly from Jim's waist up to the top. And uh, this is kind of the core structure of the suit. It's what we attach everything to. Um, so the arms, I'll talk about the backpack in a minute. So yeah, if Jim wants to demonstrate some of the arm mobility here, um, this really just provides us, again, some structure to mount things to. Each of the arms have a variety of uh, mobility joints and elements that we've designed uh, at Axiom, uh, including the gloves. The gloves are a critical um, part of the suit design, especially for microgravity EVAs where you're using them for hours at a time to translate, to operate tools, to you know, fix things to the suit, and so on. So we put a ton of effort into those gloves, pretty, pretty proud of where they're at, and are confident those are going to perform uh, very well. If Jim turns to the side here, um, some people may be wondering, hey, how do you even get in this suit? Uh, there's a hatch on the back, actually. You can see two hinges here. So this suit's a little bit different than the suits of uh, kind of today that's used on the space station. So this is called a rear entry design or a back entry design. This hatch would open up. Um, you would put your feet in, put your arms in, and then kind of shimmy down into the suit. And then we would close the hatch. Um, mounted to the hatch is this box, affectionately known as the backpack. Uh, we call it the, the portable life support system. So inside of this box are all the parts and the components to keep, to kind of keep you alive while you're doing EVA. You can think of it as like a very fancy scuba tank and air conditioner kind of combined into one. Um, so on the lower torso, so let's start kind of from the waist going down to the, to the boots. Um, I'll let Jim do some squats and lunges and, and, and just show off some of the uh, some of the mobility uh, that the suit has and demonstrate some different movements. There's a variety of joints that we've put <clears throat> as well into the lower torso assembly. And this is going to be a huge improvement over the Apollo suits. The Apollo suits didn't have many of these types of joints that we've put in this suit. So the astronauts will be more comfortable, have an easier time walking, performing tasks, um, getting down to like to pick up a rock or something like that or use a geology tool. Um, and then the other thing that, uh, yeah, that's a great, great demonstration there by Jim. Um, the other thing I wanted to touch on is the boots. The boots are a critical, uh, critical part of the suit, especially for the, the Artemis III mission and missions to the, the, the south pole of the moon. Um, we'll be entering regions called permanently shadowed regions. These are regions of the moon that never see sunlight, and they're very, very cold. And so it's very important that we insulate the boots uh, appropriately to keep the astronauts' feet um, uh, comfortable during the EVA. That's a portion of the design. There's, there's, um, as, as Mr. Suffragini mentioned, there's many portions of this design that we've that we've kind of adopted from XEMU and are continuing to refine. That's a, that's an excellent portion. The, the XEMU team did a tremendous job, and a lot of our teammates did a tremendous job designing those boots. So we're taking those forward and refining them to flight. Um, those are a, a really a key aspect of the suit. Um, 
I think I've covered everything pretty quickly here at a high level. I don't think I've missed anything here. Um, so I know we've got some questions and answers that we want to go to, but before we do that, I'd love to introduce um, our Director of Human Space Flight and the upcoming Commander of AX2 Mission to the International Space Station, Peggy Whitson. Peggy has spent a lot of time in spacesuits. So. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here today. This is, this is a great um, example of what innovation can do. It's, this is going to be such a much more flexible suit, and the range of motion is really going to improve the astronauts' ability to do all those tasks that they're going to do while they're out exploring on the lunar surface and eventually on Mars. That would be so special. And we are here today, actually, because of this young group of people here that are here for the Moon to Mars Festival. We think that it's really important that we get you guys started on your spaceflight training. And uh, it's, it's really important because we know that you're gonna be our future and you're gonna be able to wear this suit someday. So we're very much looking forward to that. And we actually have some really little special guests that are gonna ask some questions. And I have somebody I'd like to introduce who's gonna help us out with that. And this is my pilot. John Schaffner, we're flying. <laughs> we're flying on the Axiom 2 mission that's going to the International Space Station in a few months. And um, John is here to help me out and get some young people up here to, to chat with you and ask a few questions about this suit. Here we go. Well, I have the extreme pleasure of um, talking to myself in the past. I, was, I had a, an astronaut in me since I was 10. It took me a while, but because of today, the, worst been, the, the wait has been worth it uh, to talk to some people today. First, I'd like to thank NASA and Axiom for making all of this possible in the private and commercial spaceflight endeavor. I think uh, it's a great step, and we're gonna introduce some kids to you that I think will be your future, both for Axiom, Artemis, and NASA. So, uh, <coughs> I'd like to bring these young people down here that have uh, brought us some really fabulous questions. By the way, thank you, Peggy. I look yes. forward to our flight. I do, too. It's going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> Looking good. Come on over here. Man. You know, this is great for me. This is actually my demographic, so I, I, I feel right at home. All right. Awesome. So what do you think? That's quite a suit, right? Pretty neat, huh? Good. Now, I understand you guys have some questions. Uh, Remington, you're eight years old. You've been thinking about space for how long? Uh, about a year. Okay. So what is your question today? Do you wear your space suit in space? Oh, the, your, your, is that a question for me? I'll take it. Uh, well, I won't actually wear this suit. I might sneak back tonight and slip it on. We'll see what happens. But uh, I think this suit will look great on you. So I'm looking forward to one day seeing you in space in this very suit. Would you like that? Cool. Good morning. You're Ian, right? Okay. How old are you? Um, I'm five. That's awesome. So you have a question for Russell, and Russell's right back right. here behind us. What is your question for Russell? Um, what's your favorite part about your spacesuit? Oh, that's a that's a great question. Um, you know, if you're, if you're going to walk on the moon, I think you have to do it in some pretty cool shoes. So probably the boots. I think the boots are probably my, my favorite part. He likes the boots. I like your shoes, by the way, today. Thank you for your question, Ian. You look good in this suit also. Hi, Charlotte. I met you a minute ago up there. You, you had a lot more to say then. <laughs> what? <laughs> So you have a question. I think it's for Peggy, right? Want me to help you? You know, I know she, she makes me nervous, too. <laughs> she's, she's my commander, and she's a very famous astronaut, and it's okay. She has answers for everything. I've tried. 
So I think your question is, how far away is the Earth from Mars? Is that what you'd like to know? Um, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? Okay. That's I okay. I don't either, but Peggy knows. I think it's 120.22 million miles away. That takes a long time to get there. Maybe like almost nine months, but I'd sign up. So. <laughs> How far does your grandmother live away? <laughs> Thank you for your question this morning. <laughs> Viz, good morning, sir. 10 years old. You're almost going to be 11 though, right? All right. Okay, for Mark. Okay, Mark is right back here, the gentleman that introduced the suit to you. Okay, what is your question? What, what characteristics about the suit will help us survive in space? That's a great question, Viz. So, as you probably already know, deep space can be a very harsh environment. Um, so, and there's no oxygen, there's no atmosphere. So when we design our suit, we have to make sure it can keep you warm, it can cool you, there's oxygen for you to breathe, and even food and water. So those are all very important aspects of, of our new spacesuit. All right, you've got it from the top. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Remington, back to you. You had another question. This one I think was for Russell, is that right? I'll take it. Okay. Uh, okay, we're working on it, we're almost there. How long can you live in space? How long can you live in space? That's a, that's a great question. Um, so we've had people, or NASA has had people as an agency on this International Space Station for over 20 years. Some of those individuals have, have stayed on, uh, on the space station for over a year at a time. But we don't actually know how long. So we, we need to keep exploring, need to keep um, building space stations and going back to space to figure out answers to questions just like that. That's long enough for me. <laughs> Great job, thank you. Uh, Jane, over to you in the pink. Okay, you have a question for Peggy? I have questions for her too, but how about you first? What is your question? How many times can you go on a space mission as an astronaut? So I've been, I've been on uh, three different space flights previously. They were long duration missions and John and I are gonna go on another mission together here shortly in a few months. And so that'll be four, uh, but I'm looking forward to any others I can get. <laughs> How many times would you like to go to space? Three. <laughs> okay, we've got you down for that. We've got you down for three. Okay. Viz. Last question's yours. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, this is for Bob, right behind you, Bob Cabana and Mike Suffredini, but these two gentlemen here. What is your question? When will we, when will we see the spacesuit on the moon? That is a great question, Vince, and NASA is working very, very hard to ensure that we keep Artemis III on track and our goal is to have the first woman and next man back on the surface of the moon on Artemis III in 2025. And they'll be wearing an Axiom lunar surface suit. Awesome. How old will you be in 2025? Sorry? In 2025, when the suit is on the moon, uh, when, well, yes, how old will you be? Uh, 11, 12, 13. Okay, 13, awesome. Uh, the Artemis generation, thank you very much. And we'll see you guys in class. Thanks for coming up, sweetie. <laughs>
Wow, that is super cool. Isn't that exciting? Let's do another round of applause for everyone. This is so exciting to be part of this. Well, again, I want to express heartfelt thanks to all of our panelists here. Congratulations to NASA and Axiom for this amazing milestone and achievement as we prepare to return humans to the moon in an entirely new architecture and program. And we can't wait for that day when we have the first woman, a person of color, and other astronauts step on the surface of the moon and really begin a whole new phase of adventure and science and exploration. So with that, that concludes today's program. Thank you for joining us. And I would like to invite members of the media to come to the front for a closer conversation. And we look forward to having all of you join us at the Moon to Mars Festival here at Space Center Houston. Again, it runs through Sunday of this week with live entertainment on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night and Sunday afternoon. Again, thank you for joining us. And here we go. Ten, Hydrogen burn-off igniters initiate. Seven, six, five, four-stage engine start. Three, two, one. Boosters in ignition. And liftoff of Artemis One. We rise together.